Not enough to win a championship because the overall endurance crown is going to be won by Akodis ASP, by Mercedes, by Danny Junkadea, by Jules Gounon and Raffaele Marciello who comes across the line now. They finish fifth in the race. That is the championship and there is relief as well as joy. And look at this in gold, absolutely. No, to turn a contact, mighty punted off the road by Lucas Al. Two corners from home and the class leader dispatched towards the barriers. Well, disappointing, that's all I will say about that manoeuvre. Vance and Arbil, or put it this way, Vance and Arbil didn't get alongside. Oh, contact on the tie eight. Oh, well, we've got that, one that of the Ferraris and one of the Santalot cars I talked about. We might need a safety car and uh, contact, yeah, eight and debris everywhere. If the cars had clashed and gone off the circuit, it wouldn't be so bad, but they've certainly covered the track down into turn eight. We can come. Ah, OK, the Sky Tempesta car spun the Audi around and then the uh, Ferrari clearly going to come into the back of it any second now. Oh, that was a heavy impact for Hugo Delacorte. Nowhere left to go. And you can see the debris everywhere. So take a look. That's Eddie Chiba going up the inside, spinning Aurelian Panis around. For Hugo Valente, dust settling as he been off the road coming yep. out of the Villeneuve chicane. Yeah, he ran and ride again on the exit of the chicane. Uh, we didn't see it happen, but we saw the consequence of the dust up in the air. Up the hill we go, and well, further down the field, and back up at the Peritella. Oh, that's Ooh. the reason why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear oh, me. Wow. That was a code brown moment as they wow. all scattered. Wow. Oh. wow. Well, that was lucky. Lucky. Well, that's the understatement of the day. And Alberto Di Falco, who's hanging on, hanging on, out of turn three. Will he be in the right position for turn four? Not for want of trying. He's got to make the undercut, or otherwise he's going to be hung out on the outside. and allow the McLaren to make that pass. He seems to like the outside line because he's had success and now he's got the inside coming through turn six, then the curve of turn seven and contact dodge of cars run goes the, well, the Lamborghini and that's going to clobber one of the corner markers. So fortunately no specific damage. Oh, and the McLaren has got a cut down right rear tire as a consequence of that contact. Unon goes through and also cuts across the curves came Kropinski. Two clashes and Eddie Cheever says thank you, I'm coming yeah, I think Kropinski will be the one that will get a penalty or some recognition because he actually cut across the inside of turn six and just ran wide into the side of the McLaren. And not only biffs it once, he biffs it the second time just to make sure he felt the first wow, one. Wow, what's happened to this? That's a big impact and uh, that's the Nicholas Bart Gilles Magnus Audi. I think he's Cesar Gazzo now at the wheel of it. It is, and Cesar Gazzo has gone off the road, presumably coming out of Blanchimont. He's done damage to the front of the car. Uh, he's got the Santa Dot Junior team Audi, in, or what's left of it, into the pit lane. Damage, sizable damage on the left front. And here he goes, and sideways. Goes. Yeah, it was Blanchimont. Wait for the bang. Yes, indeed. Oh, I mean, that's a heavy impact on the left front. And uh, the bodywork, apart from anything else, being shy on the outside. Many of them go wide. So look, the Audi leads getting away a little bit. Rivera second, Drudy third, Aitken fourth, fifth is clean, a drama there oh. off the road spectacularly goes Rob Bell in the McLaren. That's going to be a yellow, no doubt about it. With the Porsche coming out of the happy, look at the top of the shot. It's such a group, I mean, it's just absolute, there we go. So was that the back of the Porsche, was that the back of the, the, the okay, whatever, it was the, the Lamborghini and the Porsche were both there. Wheel comes off as well, or tower actually came off rather than the wheel. Two. The completion of what will be lap 57 will go racing this time. It's our third interruption. The safety car lights off. The instruction. Oh, oh drama in the background. Pink. A big, big oh, hit. Oh dear, the BMW. That's the 50. I think that's the. Wow. It's the Bentley. It's the Bentley. It's oh, Matthew de Robiano, and that's not going to be the end of the safety no, car. No, no, no. That's not at all. That is a massive, massive safety hit. Safety car lights on. We remain in safety car procedure. <laughs> no, no kidding, Alan. I'll tell you what. I well. Think it's more than a second to clear the racetrack and the exit of uh, Aqua Minerale, that's going to take some time. Going to do? He, he had a half a look about him, but the Aston covered it. Oh, and the oh, oh, oh. team gets wide now. This is a chance for Gugno. Better drive off the chicane. Are they going to come side by side? Gugno has done enough, I think. He'll be on the outside of the road coming into the corner. But Nicky team's going to stick the Aston Martin down the inside and deny. Side by side out of the corner. Now, let's see who's got more grunt down the hill. Nicky Team comes out ahead. Jules Gounod stands his ground on the outside line. He's going to have the inside for the first part of our rouge, the outside for the second part. He's got his nose in front down the hill. Here comes Nicky Team. Mercedes ahead. They touch the Aston Martin. Spins off the road. Goes Gounod on around. Goes Team. He avoids anything solid so far. He spins. He's in the middle of the road. He's off the road. 
Jewel Gunon keeps going. Nikki Team, after a monster, monster spin, gets going again. That was a proper Code Brown moment. He's got going. He's avoided hitting anything or being hit by anybody. But he had four tyres that'll be like threepenny bits. They'll be flat spotted so badly slowing down. Now, has he got a serious problem or not, or is that simply the vibration from those four He's wheels? He's got a puncture, has he? He may have actually, in that spin, he might have actually, you know, you see the rubbish falling off it, so when he was spinning, he's probably gone through the carcass of the tyre. Yeah. We've seen that happen earlier this year, a tyre, there was actually a hole in it where a car had spun and it spun through the carcass, through the cord, and the tyre just did, uh, wow, what an exciting Oof. moment that was especially if you're a Nicky right, team. Go green, and we go racing. On the inside line is Elise Depal. Gunon drops back into the middle, up the inside line. Goes back to Drudy, and there's carnage going into the first corner. Cars scatter everywhere. One Porsche is off. There are three That's cars three in car. the gravel. There's one on the inside line. This is going to be a safety car for sure. Well, it all kicked off in the middle to the back of the field, turning in, and inevitably four cars into two, into one that's never going to go. Now, John, let's have a look at this. Well, we go racing. Forget about it. Oh, look down the inside. There's the Mercedes that caused yeah, it. That's it. It got tipped, then he was off on the inside, and then two Audis and the Porsche end up going off. So the Mercedes went way up, and it was off track. There it is now, facing wrong way down the middle of Paddockle Bend. The Porsche was able to get regain track as its rear wheels and tyres were on the tarmac. But watch for the Mercedes, there it goes now. It has actually got two wheels off the racing line inside that demarcation. And once he makes the contact, it's a bit like a game of snooker, just one car hits yeah. the other, but there's no, no Incident at the start in. involving car 30, 33, 54 and 86 under investigation. The other element to that, John, of course, you saw well, Ilko, as you rightly said, two wheels on the grass. but. Of course, the barrier starts to taper out, so the room disappears. He had to get back on the racetrack. Then you see it taper, so he's got to force his way back on. Yeah, I mean, it was his error that set off this whole incident. I suspect that's going to be under investigation because he did have two wheels across that white demarcation line, and that line is there for a, a reason. Yep. It's not there to allow you to use it to your advantage. Now, this is Rossi. Look, there's the Mercedes on the right. Squeeze, tries to get back on, clips the Porsche, which clips the Audi, which clips the other Audi, and Rossi... Oh, that was a real hearty mouth. We're about to start the last lap. So Aurelian Panis now has 14 corners in which to get the race lead. The move might come again at the end of the pit straight, but this is where the Mercedes has the advantage. Through they go. Fastest lap of the race, Thomas Neubau. The lead gap was three tenths last time. It's one tenth this time. Panis again looks to the inside. Bogoslavski's Mercedes has a little slide heading down towards turn one. Aurelian Panis has brought the gap from 25 seconds to about 25 millimetres up towards turn two. Again, he closes right up, goes for the inside line. Is he going to be able to get off the corner ahead? He's also nearly sprinting up the inside. Charles Weirs is five seconds behind them in third place. Five seconds back is Weirs. He might get up there with them by the end of the lap. Well, the pace he's running at, he will do because this is being dictated to totally by Bogoslowski, who's now hogging the inside into turn five to prevent Panis, to stop Panis getting his momentum. There you can see number 32 coming up. 32 is going to be in this race coming up to turn 14 and maybe across the start finish line. Pat but Charles Vance has got the advantage, the drive, the speed of turn six through turn seven, down into turn eight, and Charles Vance is on course to take a victory, an unbelievable victory. Nose to tail, Timur Bogoslavski and Charles Wirtz, who has come back from nowhere on the slick tyres. He gets up the inside, the door is closed, and Aurelian Panis is trying to fight back. Bogoslavski still has to defend. Here comes Panis for a go on the inside to the outside line, goes Charles Wirtz. It's all about grip coming off the corner. Bogoslavski gives him room. Wirtz goes round the outside and he leaves. They're still side by side. Bogoslowski fights back, but Charles Wirtz has done it. Charles Wirtz goes through. What a race. A delighted Vincent Voss sees Charles Wirtz come back into the mix. Whoever it was that did call for the slicks is right after all. Down they turn to the last corner. Panis still can't get past Bogoslowski, but Charles Wirtz comes up towards the chequered flag. Bogoslowski goes out wide. It's a drag race to the line. Panis finally gets ahead of him. Charles Wirtz and Dries Van Thor win. Second, it's a virtual dead heat as they come across the line and second place confirmed as Aurelian Panis by one tenth of a second. Timor Bogoslowski is third. We never saw that one coming as we watched 32 tumble down the order but Charles Wirtz and Dries Van Thor win on a slippery Valencia circuit.